Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part seven of my jQuery and Ajax tutorial. In this part of the tutorial, I'm going to show you and explain to you all the code that went into making the web page that you saw at the end of part six of my jQuery and Ajax tutorial. Like always, we start off the HTML code and get the jQuery library ready for use. When the page loads, I attach all of my event handlers to the buttons that you will see in the HTML code below. You've seen this before in the jQuery and Ajax event handler tutorials in the past, so I will not go into detail exactly what's going on. I want to specifically draw your attention to make sure you don't forget to add the curly brace followed by a semicolon at the end of this code, however, because this is a common error made. Here is the code I used to make the logo disappear. The rest of the page will move up and the logo seems to disappear when I call the function named hide. The value 2500 is the number of milliseconds I want it to take before the image has completely disappeared. The function show will make the image reappear on the screen. The HTML code that places the image on the HTML page looks like what you can see here in the third bulleted item, this div that I've defined down here. The function toggle will replace one block of text with another. Again, I'm creating a two and a half second delay with the value 2500. The HTML code that will be manipulated by Toggle looks like what you can see here in the second bulleted item. When the button is clicked and Toggle with the value of 2500 is called, the first H4 element will be replaced by the one hidden below it. And if I click the button again, they change places with each other again and will continue to change places as many times as you hit the button. The fade out function will fade the image away instead of making it shrink away like the hide function does. The fade to function will fade to the opacity level that you define with the second attribute you sent to it. In this case, I'm saying I want the opacity level to be set to 30%. I then call the fade to function again to make the opacity level 100%. The fade in function is used to bring an image back after it has been deleted by the fade out function, and fade in has no effect on changes made by the fade to function. These functions pretty much do what their names say. Slide up moves all of the content up over the element that it is called on. And the function slide down slides the elements back down to make room for the element slide down was called on. Here we're creating a custom animation with the animate function. Here I'm changing a bunch of CSS properties on the fly. You can change the text using any of those properties defined in CSS. And if you don't know them, check out my CSS styling HTML tutorial. And you can see here the rest of the HTML code that goes into creating this animation web page. The code, of course, starts on the left side of the screen and then continues on on the right side of the screen, whole way to the bottom. In the final part of my jQuery and Ajax tutorial, I will explain everything there is to know in regards to passing information to the server and calling for PHP scripts to be run. And now I will show you the web page you will be creating in part nine of my jQuery and Ajax tutorial. In the next tutorial, I'm going to show you how to get text as well as XML data directly from the server without a page reload, as well as communicate with PHP scripts without a page reload. If you watch right here, you can see when I click on this button, I got that text dynamically from the server. Now if I type in a number five, for example, here and click on double number, I'm going to access a PHP script on the server and get myself a result. And I can also pull customer XML data directly from the server and put it right down here by clicking this button. Till next time.